An auto mechanic from northern New York almost died this week, twice. First, he survived a small plane crash. Then he came close to drowning while somehow staying afloat for nearly a full day. It was supposed to be a routine flight from New York to Wisconsin for a family reunion. But midway over Lake Huron, 42-year-old Michael Trapp suddenly found himself in an emergency situation calling for help. I'm going down right now. I gave him my bearing. I told him I'm 29.2 miles from shore. I said, get out here. Don't, I don't want to die. After losing the engine on his two-seat Cessna, the auto mechanic plummeted 3,000 feet and crashed into the water 17 miles east of Harbor Beach, Michigan. The tail hit, wheels hit, instantly upside down. It was a bit of a violent crash. The windshield blew right in my face. Both glass come in, blew right into me. The door was open. I went to get out, couldn't, under my seatbelt. Then I swam out of the plane. Uninjured and alone, Trapp swam for more than 17 hours without a life jacket, unsure whether he would make it home alive. The one thing I wanted one more time was just to uh, wrap my arms around my wife and my mom and you know, all my family, you know, just one more time. Trapp says while he was treading water, he tried to flag down passing boats, but it wasn't until he put his sock in his hand and waved for help that a couple from Michigan finally found him. His eyes were starting to close. He went down once, and he knows that once you start falling asleep, that's probably going to be it, and he just struggled on that. So our, the timing was perfect. I mean, if we would have left five minutes earlier than we did this morning or later, you know, probably be a different story. And Michael Trapp joins us now from the Covenant Medical Center in Saginaw, Michigan. Mr. Trapp, good morning. Good morning to you. Good to talk to you. Boy, you're a lucky guy. Um, if you can, just describe your thoughts. You know, you're flying. Things are going well. You're three, four hours into the flight. All of a sudden, you realize the plane's in trouble. You're over water, and you're going down. Well, a lot goes through your mind at that point. They teach you how to crash a plane, so I was trying to get a hold of the FAA, tell everybody where I was, make the plane ready for landing, make it so I could get out, and I was just going through checklists to make to keep the engine running and just everything I could possibly think of to keep myself in the air and prepare for hitting the water. Yeah, you hit the water, you said the plane tumbles, the, wind, the windshield's kind of blowing, hitch in the face, you're strapped in. When you're finally able to free yourself from the plane as the plane is, is, is going to the bottom, you get to the surface. What's it like at that point? I mean, you're, you're 17 miles away from the shore. Well, you can't see nothing. The waves are like 10 feet tall. Um, I had my shoes and pants on. I couldn't swim, so I had to kick them off so I could swim. When the swell went to the top of the swell, I could see a tower on the land in yeah. Michigan. And that's, as soon as just, every time I went to the top, I just kept my eyeball looking for that tower. And I just kept on my back and just kept paddling towards that tower. How scared were you? Bad. I don't know anything you compare that to. I mean, what, I mean, what was it? Uh, what did you think about? What kind, of, what kind of kept you going? You've got no life preserver on. You're in the middle of the water. Just the will to survive, I guess. I just, I, I, there's more. I, I'm not done yet. I'm not ready to die yet. So I just wanted to keep going and just see if I couldn't get myself back to shore and try to salvage something out of this disaster. Uh, were you a good swimmer before this? I don't swim a lot. Um, I'm not that active. I don't walk a lot. Um, I guess I'm just fat enough where I could keep my body stayed warm in the water where uh, I could keep my core temperature up enough. See, so all that, all that dieting people told you about, it's a good thing you avoided that. You, on the plane, you had, you had a, a homing beacon on the plane. Where was it in relation to, to your pilot's seat? Oh, it's right at my left hand. It's six, when I'm flying the plane, it's six inches away from my left hand. And after you hit the water, where was that homing beacon? Six inches from my left hand, still in the plane, right you, there in its, in its pocket. Yeah, but you didn't have it. Was it the type of thing you could have grabbed? Could you have removed it from the plane and, and taken it with you to help the this, this search teams find you? Oh, simply I could have, but that was not, I wasn't thinking of that. My, my, I was underwater when I got out of the plane, so I had to swim out of the plane, and my biggest concern was just getting out and getting some air. When uh, the, I guess that you had a couple of opportunities where there were some passing boats that kind of passed you by, and there was really no way for you to kind of get their attention. Uh, how frustrating was that for you to know that, oh, that could have been my last opportunity, or that could have been my last opportunity to be saved? Well, it wasn't so important at first, but as time went by, it became more and more crucial. And uh, 12 or 13 boats went by before the 14th one picked me up. Uh, lucky number 14. Is it uh, safe to say that you'll be driving back to New York? Yes, one of my best friends came out, and he's going to drive me home. They offered to fly me home, 
I was like, well, maybe we'll just stand forward on the ground and drive back. <laughs> no, no way. Hey, well, you know what? You are, you, yeah, I'm sure you feel pretty lucky. Do you not? I absolutely, I feel lucky. Nice. Yes. Well, we're we're so happy you were able to take the time and talk with us this morning, Michael Trapp. All the best to you. Okay, and stay on the ground. Thank you a whole bunch.